There's not much trickery to renaming files in Linux, but if you want to batch rename files and folders or want to learn how to rename things from the command line, it can get a little more intricate. Here we'll show you several methods of renaming and batch renaming files in Linux. Hi, this is Phil from Make Tech Easier, and this is how to rename files in Linux. Renaming files is not a particularly advanced operation. As long as it's done on a small number of files, it usually doesn't require special tools. However, when there's an entire folder of photos from last year's vacation waiting to be renamed, it might be wiser to consider some time-saving tricks or apps. There are two general approaches to batch file renaming. It can be done either via the command line interface or by using a standalone application. Linux users already know how powerful the CLI can be, so it shouldn't be surprising that there are several commands for file renaming. Renaming files with MV command. A simple way to rename files and folders is with the MV command, shortened from move. Its primary purpose is moving files and folders, but it can also rename them since the act of renaming a file is interpreted by the system as moving it from one name to another. The following syntax is used to rename files with MV. MV option file name 1.ext file name 2.ext. The file name 1.ext is the original or old name of the file and file name 2.ext is the new name. The same pattern works for folder renaming. If the files are not located in the currently active folder, their full path has to be specified. MV home user files file one ext and home user files file name two ext. Note that the MV command requires write permission for the folder containing the files. In the case of system files and folders, the user needs to obtain root permissions to rename files by prepending them with the sudo or su command. An extra layer of protection is provided by the minus "-i", or interactive option, which asks the user to confirm the file name before it's actually applied. Also there's a minus "-v", or verbose option, which lists all the changes that have been made by MV. Options are written after MV, but before the file names. Using the rename command. This command is slightly more advanced than MV because it requires the knowledge of, or at least a basic familiarity with, regular expressions. That may sound scary, but don't give up on the rename just yet. It can be used for plain batch renaming by simply following tutorials like the one I've linked to in the description. The rename syntax looks like this. Rename option, open quotes, s slash old name slash new name slash close quotes, file one dot ext, file24.ext. The letter S stands for substitute and it's the main part of the regular expression. Single quotes around it are obligatory. Available options are minus V for verbose, prints the list of renamed files along with their new names, minus N, no action, a test mode or simulation which only shows files that will be changed without touching them, and minus F, a forced overwrite of the original files. The rename command also accepts wildcards to rename multiple files of the same type, and it works on file extensions as well. For example, this would change all the files with the extension .jpeg to .jpg. The wildcard symbol, asterisk, means that all files in the folder will be affected. The regular expression also has its own options or modifiers. G, global, affects all occurrences of the expression, and I, performs case insensitive substitution. They are written at the end of the expression just before the closing single quote and can be combined, like so. This example would apply to all .jpg files that contain DSC, DSC and DSC, all the different cases, and change that part of the file name to photo. However, because of the minus N option, the command wouldn't actually rename the files but just print them in the console window. Substitution is not the only thing that this regular expression can do. There's also translation, marked by the letter Y, which can transform the file names on a more complex level. It is most often used to change the file name case. This example would change the names of all the .jpg files from lowercase to uppercase. 
To do it vice versa, just switch the old name and new name parts of the regular expression. Using the rename command boils down to mixing a few basic patterns to achieve the desired result. Thanks to the minus N option, the users will never have to put their files at risk or their nerves at stake, since it offers a safe and useful preview of what the renamed files will look like. Metamorphose 2 Metamorphose is a cross-platform file and folder mass renamer. For those that prefer a GUI tool for carrying out renaming operations, Metamorphose is quite a powerful tool to use. It's available for both Windows and Linux. To get started, go to its website and download the installer file for your distro. It provides a deb file for Debian-based distro and an RPM package for Fedora, Mandriver and SUSE. It's also available in AUR in Arch Linux. Once you run the app, it will be the first picker tab. This is where you select the directory that contains the files you want to batch rename. Do note that it only supports one directory per renaming operation, though it can recurse through child folders within the selected directory. After selecting the directory, click on the Renamer tab. From here, you can decide on the renaming rules. On the left pane, you can select the action you want to perform. For example, Insert will insert terms to the name, while Length allows you to trim the file name to a number of characters. There are also the Move Text, Replace and Modify options you can choose. As you can see, it provides extensive options for you to rename your files. Lastly, just click the Go button at the top of the bottom pane to run the renaming action. If you find any errors after renaming, there is an undo option to revert all the changes. Pi Renamer, the easy way out. Finally, the solution that all the anti-console users have been waiting for, a desktop application where everything can be done with a simple click of the mouse. Pi Renamer is a crazy powerful file renaming tool written in Python. At the moment, the official website seems to be down, but the users of Ubuntu and its derivatives can still install PyRenamer from the repositories using the command sudo apt-get install PyRenamer. Alternatively, you can compile it using this forked code from GitHub, link in the description. The interface consists of four parts. A tree view file browser for selecting files and folders. A central preview pane showing the file names before and after renaming a tabbed control area for choosing the renaming criteria, and the options sidebar. PyRenamer can remove accents and duplicate symbols from file names, replace any string of text with another, change file names to uppercase, lowercase or sentence case, and automatically insert or remove spaces and underscores. Beginners will love it because all this can be simply selected in the tabbed area, previewed in the main area and confirmed by clicking Rename. If they wish to experiment with patterns, PyRenamer provides a cheat sheet to make it easier. Advanced users will appreciate PyRenamer's ability to rename multimedia files by reading from their metadata. It's also possible to manually rename a single file when a batch rename is unnecessary. In essence, PyRenamer wraps the functionality of the MV and Remove commands into a user-friendly GUI. It's a great choice for those who aren't confident in their CLI skills. Of course, there are other ways to rename files in Linux, by writing a script for example, or by using other tools similar to PyRenamer. What do you use to rename your files? Share your tips and tricks in the comments. If you like this video, then please tap that like button, leave a comment, and also perhaps visit our Make Tech Easier YouTube channel for more guides, tutorials, and lists about all things tech. We cover Windows, Linux, Mac, iOS and Android and many other things in between. So we'll almost definitely have something for you. Plus, if you feel inclined, hit the subscribe button to never miss out on any of our videos. And also, why not hit the notification bell to be alerted every time a new video hits the channel. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. That's it for now. See you next time.